We're going to do a walkthrough of our 2020 Winnebago Adventurer 36Z. We're going to do an outside tour and an inside tour. We're going to start on the outside. This is on the Ford V10 engine. As I said, this is a 2020 model. It was built in 2019. We took delivery in February of 2020. So this is a pre-COVID build. Everything works as it should, except for the ice maker in the freezer. I made a mistake winterizing one year, didn't let the, uh, the antifreeze run through the freezing process in the, in the uh, ice maker. And something broke and it leaks water unless you shut the valve off under the sink, which is what we've done. So we actually just use ice cube trays to make ice, works fine. The tires have a date code of May of 2019. So you have at least two more years of use out of these Michelin uh, 235-80R 22.5s. This has three slides. Of course, the slides are in. That is the living room slide, the bedroom slide in the back. And then over here, we have a huge, almost a full wall slide. The 36Z is Winnebago's largest gas class A motorhome. It's almost 37 feet long. And I wanted to show you, it's a little breezy today, but I wanted to show you the huge awning that we have. If I remember correctly, and I'll, I'll put all the specs on this video, uh, I believe the awning is 26 feet and obviously provides a lot of shade. And you can see it does have the LED lighting as well. Has an outside entertainment system, decent size television and stereo. The stereo is Bluetooth and USB compatible. We would always hook my phone up via Bluetooth and listen to music while we sat outside. As you can see, the glare on the TV, watching TV during the day is tough, but we would watch at night sometimes, maybe a football game or a movie. When it's dark out, it makes it much easier to see. First storage bay. This one is actually a pass-through. It's a really nice size. We would put our chairs in here, um, our dog fence. Those are step supports. So I would put them under our steps, so just give a little bit more support. But here you can see the pass-through. And there is a storage door on the other side, which we'll see when we walk around. But good size storage bay right there. Next, right next to it, there's an even bigger storage bay. This is not a pass-through. There is our camp rug. So, a lot of the things that you're going to see in this video are going to come with this motorhome. This is going to be a turnkey motorhome, meaning you can pretty much turn the key and go and be able to camp. All you have to do is stop and get some food. We're going to um, supply a lot of the necessities with the purchase of this motorhome. So again, it does come with the camp rug. Also, it comes with a telescoping mop. We use Aero Cosmetics Wash Wax All. I won't need the telescoping mop head anymore because we're getting out of the camping seen, but I'm sure you can use it. That is um, access to the back of the refrigerator. As you can see, I just mentioned we used Aero Cosmetics Wash Wax All. I just finished wa washing and waxing it. 
and you can see the shine. Again, this is a 2020. It's kept outside, but I wash it and wax it regularly. The paint is in great shape. Beautiful shine. Here's our third storage bay on the passenger side or the camp side of the motorhome. This is we this is where we kept our grill. The grill will be included. It is a Blackstone tailgater combo, meaning it has a, a traditional grill and it also has a flat top. The best of both worlds. So you're going to get that as well as some um, supplies with for the grill. Y'all also can see the uh, fresh water tank, which is handy when you're uh, filling, so you can see how full it is. That is the port for the gas grill. So it does have a quick connect LP connection, which is awesome. So I would just have our grill out here at the rear of the motorhome. Nice and handy. Here is the Onan 5500 generator. Works perfectly. As you can see, it was last serviced on December 4th of 2023. Today is October 31st of 2024, so it hasn't been serviced yet this year. But it's been serviced every year that we've had it. And here is the hot water tank. Going around to the back. I'm also going to be pointing out some of the uh, modifications and add-ons that we've done. Um, I forgot to mention at the very beginning, but all the exterior lights have been upgraded to LED. The headlights, the turn signals, the marker lights, everything upgraded to LED, as well as the tail lights. So I put these on soon after we bought it, and boy, did they make a difference. Much, much brighter. Another add-on that we did, Volterra sewer hose tubes, holders, if you will. Two of them. This motorhome is a one and a half bath and it has separate tanks for each. So instead of swapping the sewer hoses back and forth when I wanted to dump, I wanted to have a sewer hose for each. But of course they take up a lot of room. So this was a really easy way to carry our sewer hoses. So here we have, this is actually two hoses combined. I think, if I remember right, this is about 25 or 30 feet of sewer hose. So I use that one you know, for the longer trek. And then this one, I believe is about 15 feet. It's just one hose. But again, these come with. You can go camping tomorrow. Here is the hitch receiver. It's rated for 5,000 pounds. We tow our Jeep Wrangler, which is about 4,800 pounds with no problem. Uh, the V10 engine going up and down hills, pulling that thing. You don't even know it's back there. I will include my blue ox tow bar as well. On the driver's side, this is the wet bay. Wet bay, the main wet bay, we'll say. Everything's marked for your fresh water fill, for your winterization, shower, whole house water filter. There's the intake valve, and it also has a black tank flush. As you can see, I put on uh, quick connects on everything. Just made life a whole lot simpler. There's the sewer outlet. We also have a switch for the water pump, and here is your connections for cable and satellite. 
You will also get some extras. There is a water filter in there and some odds and ends, some, some of the quick connects, um, some of the connections for the cable, the cable itself. A lot of that stuff is in there. You also get the water hoses. We have a, uh, a G9, I believe it's called, water hose. Loved it. Um, so much easier to manage and maneuver. This tube here is for winterization. Uh, it's so easy to winterize this. All you do is stick that tube in your uh, bucket of antifreeze and it sucks it right up when you turn the water pump on, as long as you have these winterization valves set correctly. And then it completely winterizes the unit. It takes about five minutes, super easy. This is already winterized. Next bay. Plus there's your gas spill. This is our electrical bay. It is, this motorhome is 50 amp. It does have uh, dual air conditioners. Also has a microwave. Um, with the 50 amp, all those can be run at the same time. It has a built-in surge guard. But this is also going to come with a Hughes Power Watchdog 50 amp surge protector. This has saved us numerous times when the campground pedestal was not necessarily working correctly, you know, low voltage, that sort of thing. And that uh, power watchdog, when it senses a problem, it will shut off the power. And it had done it a few times over the five years of our camping. The 50 amp power cord is, I believe, 25 feet. And I do have some various um, adapters in the back there for, for 50 to 30 amp and, and that sort of thing. We've never had to use them. Every campground we've gone to has always had 50 amp, but better safe than sorry. Here is the wet bay for the half bath. So again, it does have the sewer connection for the half bath. It also has a black tank flush as well. And it comes with two hose supports. Again, I would always run the two hoses. So you get those as well. There's a couple of other doodads in here just for, you know, when the, uh, when the sewer inlet may not line up correctly, but you get those as well. Another upgrade that we made a year ago, new batteries. Uh, the OEM batteries were your typical wet cell batteries that had to be maintained. You had to make sure water level was correct. Uh, but as you can see with all these wires, it was a pain to try to maintain and even check the batteries. So last November, just about a year ago, I upgraded these to Napa these are a commercial AGMs, maintenance free. These batteries are great. They work great. They last a long time. As you can see, there are four of them. Um, there's lots to power in this motor home, but these have worked great over the past year. And like I said, they're only a year old. They're gonna last you several more years. The last storage bay. Here we have, I use this for our blocks, tools, that sort of thing. The blocks you can have, there's some uh, oil, some antifreeze or uh, coolant. There's some odds and ends, some, um, uh, some flex seals in there, air conditioner cleaner. There's uh, lubricants in there, so they're all they all come with you. The inverter is also in this bay, as well as some fuses. And this is the other side of that pass-through. This is a 2000 watt inverter charger. So what that means is when you're hooked to shore power or when the engine is running or the generator is running, this inverter actually charges the house batteries. So 
you should always have full house batteries. We were told when we picked this up, if you're using the motorhome, the inverter switch should be turned on because it can always gain a charge from one of those three things. The engine running, the alternator, the generator, or being hooked to shore power. The last door here is a propane tank. And there it is. I have to fill this tank maybe once a year. And we would camp from April through September, sometimes in October. I had to fill it maybe once a year. And remember, we were cooking with the grill almost all the time. Sometimes in the spring and fall, we'd have to run the heat a little bit, but um, nice big tank. Don't have to use it much or fill it much. All right. So what I'm going to do now is show you the outside with the slides out. Another modification or, or upgrade that we made is all four of the jack pads have snap pads on them. They work great um, when you go to RV parks and have cement pads. You know, they don't scratch those up. They make the, the, the base a little bit wider. The circumference of it a little bit bigger. And just, I think, just works great. They were easy to install. Haven't lost one. It's really been a good upgrade. Here we are with all the slides out. This is passenger side, like I said, it's nearly a full wall slide. And then we have the living room slide as well as the bedroom slide. And wait till you see how much room is inside this motorhome. I did mention about our generator being serviced. So we bought this new from Stoltzfus RV and Marine in Westchester, Pennsylvania. And with all of their new purchases and some used if they're under a certain age, it came with a forever warranty. So the company's name is Forever Warranty. And as long as you had this inspected annually, the warranty would cover many of the things on this motorhome, including the roof. But that inspection also includes service. It included servicing the generator, servicing the hot water heater, servicing the furnace. So all of that has been done annually, as well as annual state inspection and oil changes done for the engine. Unfortunately, the forever warranty does not transfer to new owners. It's only for the original owner, but like I said, this has been maintained. The roof has been inspected every year. And in fact, last year, so it would have been last December or January, the entire roof was resealed. So you're gonna get another, a good couple of years out of that roof before it has to be completely resealed again. So I just wanted to mention that. Another modification I did, this one was handy. Our dogs, would sometimes bump into these buttons. So these buttons are for your house and chassis batteries and your awning. And they would sometimes bump into our battery buttons and shut off our power. And it happened a couple of times when we weren't home, you know, we were at the pool or something and we come back to no power. And at first we couldn't figure out why. Once we started learning what they were doing, it wasn't as much of a surprise, but I put this on. 
this is just one of the bug screens that you put on your hot water heater and I've attached it here so no more hitting of the buttons and shutting off the batteries so we'll start inside with the cockpit the bell you hear is just the jacks down warning because I have um, the accessory the key in the accessory position so um, but here we have the cockpit two very comfortable seats I did not mind riding for long distances in these seats um, as I said this is going to be a turnkey motorhome it's going to come with a Garmin GPS system it's also going to come with an easy tire tire pressure monitoring system as you can see here there are just shy of 14,000 miles on the odometer sometimes especially when the Sun is bright this dashboard or the gauges can be kind of dark so I just put a little um, task light here it's rechargeable you just turn it on lights up the dash a little bit it has a motorized nightshade button is down here because the key accessory is on it's not going to go down all the way as a safety feature so I'm going to turn this off I'm going to put it all the way down so we don't have so much of a glare We have blackout shades on both the driver and passenger side. Over here we have a switch for uh, heated mirrors. We also have our mirror control. And then here is information about the motorhome. It has a Lippert electronic leveling system. Works perfectly. The radio um, does have it is a Sirius satellite XM radio we've used it uh, nice and handy for long trips so you don't have to worry about uh, searching for stations but it also is Bluetooth compatible and it is also USB compatible and we've used both of those as well it also has a camera and um, I don't know if you noticed there were two um, silver uh, pieces on the side of the motorhome near the front those were for the turn signal so when you put your left or right turn signal on a camera for that corresponding side will go on so that's the that's the driver side and that's the passenger side of course we got some cup holders um, chassis battery switch so I can switch this so the radio and some of the functions up here work off of either the chassis battery which would be the top one or the house batteries and this button is for uh, the exhaust fans that are on the windshield of course there's our heat and air conditioning controls um, here is a 12 volt input um, I actually upgraded that to offer some USB ports as well but that's where I plugged in the GPS over here on the passenger side we have a little workstation if you will so you can just leave it like this as we're riding down the road, or we can flip this out and turns into a little desk or table for eating. This also has a 12 volt port and also USB. Up here are some cubbies. We would put our uh, walkie talkies up here for pulling out of the driveway. Um, I have, you know, our box for the TPMS, the Garmin, you know, we would keep other odds and ends up there. In the middle here are these little 
shade flaps. If you notice here that when the shade comes down, of course, the shade is squared off, but these windows are not. These windows are angled. So that shade snaps in. You can see the snap at the top and at the bottom just to cover up that gap so it doesn't let light and heat in. So here we are inside the motorhome with the slides closed. As you can see, there's a nice pathway right through so we can access the refrigerator. And I'll show you the inside of the refrigerator right now. And the freezer. But you can also access the half bath. And also access to the bed if you need it. So you could stop for the night and not have to put the slides in. And you could still use this motorhome with the slides closed. Now we'll open it up. So here we are with the slides open. Look at all this room. This is why we fell in love with this floor plan and this motorhome. So over here, we have our couch. This does open up into a full-size bed. Easily accommodates two adults. Over on this side, we have a fireplace. And yes, it does throw off heat. Actually, we use it quite a bit on chilly mornings and we don't have to run the furnace. And then above is the TV. And there you go. So as we go through here, I'm going to point out some of the other upgrades and modifications that we made, especially to the inside. One of those was I installed some LED strip lights above the slide. It goes the full length. These do change colors. There is an app for your phone, so you can control it that way. There's also a remote control, but I have to admit, I can't find it. Um, so you're going to have to download the app unless I can find the remote control. But it just adds some ambience because these LED lights that are in the ceiling, they can be awful harsh sometimes. So to have these lights here, just made for a, a nice softer look. Cabinet space in the living area. We have all of this cabinet space. It goes all the way down. We have these on here to help with the doors bouncing and making noise down as we're bouncing down the road. If you don't want them on there, you can take them off. They're just foam. They just come right off. There's also an outlet here as well as 12 volt and USB ports. These are cup holders. So if you notice, no cup holders on the couch. Now we have cup holders. They're weighted. They wrap around the, the uh, arm of the chair. Work out nicely. But again, all kinds of storage up here. Here we have the dinette. Easily fits four adults. The seats fold up to reveal storage. Now, Underneath here, we have foam toppers for both the couch bed and for this bed. So this table does lower and it could sleep a smaller adult, but this is better for kids. One of the things that we really, really like about this table, it's kind of a hidden feature. You don't even know it, but there are some handles on the side and I'm going to show you what it does. I can't do this one handed though. So I'm going to have to put down my camera. So the table comes up as you can see there. Now it's at counter height. So you can actually use this as a, a um, cook prep station. You know, we used to use it for, you know, chopping vegetables or that sort of thing. Instead of bending over 
and trying to do it at table height, now it's counter height. So just a really cool feature and a little bit of storage underneath. We would keep our placemats under there and things like that. Here's the kitchen. So as you can see, oh, I did forget to mention, we have storage here beside the fireplace. So a little cabinet there. And another one here that does have a shelf. So there's the remote for the TV, remote for the plot fireplace, and then the, the box for the um, overhead lights, the strip lights. I looked in there, the remote's not in it. Again, not sure where that is. I'll try to find it. But that has all the information in there that you need about downloading the app. And here's our kitchen. So as you can see, loads of countertop space. If you leave the sink covers on, more countertop space. These also double as a cutting board. Countertop. Storage here for plates and bowls, glasses. Again, these come with the motorhome. You can go camping tomorrow. So here we have a drawer that has utensils. Again, all yours. More utensils. Nice deep drawer here. What you see is all yours. You can of course add to it. Here we have our stovetop. We have a propane and induction. So the pots and pans that are down here are for an induction cooktop. Microwave convection oven. That is a high point model. Here is the Whirlpool refrigerator freezer. As I said, this is the only thing that doesn't work perfectly. And that's because I messed up the uh, ice maker. But it still freezes great. I mean, it gets down to zero degrees in no time. And we make ice in there with just ice cube trays and the fridge plenty of room another little upgrade i got one of these accurite temperature monitors for the refrigerator and the freezer they come with sensors that you just put in each that's what these batteries are for is to go in those sensors but just to keep an eye on your temperature especially on hot days when it can get super hot in here under the sink, room for a trash can. How many RVs have room for a trash can? That takes us to the half bath, as I gave you a little glimpse of that before, but we'll take a bigger look here. So we have a nice big mirror. Storage here. storage here or even give you a first aid kit and some toilet paper plenty of room for sitting on the toilet as you can see also we have these drawers here just for you know odds and ends washcloths that sort of thing we even have room for a trash can Again, how many RVs have room for trash cans? We actually have room for those in here. Little towel rack on back of the door too. Here's the control panel. I'm gonna come back and talk about this in a minute. I don't know if you can hear the hum, the generator is running. I had to turn that on so the fireplace would work. Not very loud at all, in fact, We've, we've slept on the bed with, with the generator running, couldn't even tell. So this is pantry slash washer and dryer space. Now this came prepped 
for a washer and dryer, we opted not to get it. And I don't remember if it was a combo unit or if it was stackable, but we're not full timers. So we didn't really need the washer and dryer. We would rather have the pantry space. So here's the pantry. But as you can see, it is very dark inside. Um, there were no lights in the pantry. I tried different kinds of lights. I tried magnetic uh, lights that automatically came on when it detected motion and you know going down the road and bumping around they would typically fall off so I eventually installed some wired lights and now this is what the pantry looks like with those wired lights it has made such a difference now both doors do have to be open because the sensor is right there so with both doors open it lights up and the, the motion lights that we had in there before, if you left the doors open too long and you weren't really moving around, the lights will go off. But these will stay on the entire time. As long as there is nothing covering that sensor, um, the lights will stay on. So this was a big improvement. We really, really like this upgrade or modification, if you will. TV in the bedroom. So yes, this motorhome has three TVs. Closet space. Lots of closet space. It's the same on the other side and lighted, of course. Drawers. We have six drawers for clothing and whatnot. Actually, pretty deep drawers as well. Here is the master bathroom. As you can see, counter space. We have cabinets, plenty of room for all of the things that you need in a bathroom. A drawer here. There's an extra washer just for you and more space more space for a trash can plenty of space for the toilet and a nice size shower and here is the bed so we opted for a king size bed it is so comfortable it is a foam mattress and i now want a foam mattress at home i also want a king size bed at home but i don't know if we have room for that but super comfortable bed and there is some storage underneath and under here we have uh the silver thing or shades that you can put in the front window just to reduce a little bit more of the glare something that i forgot to mention so that is the door lock another upgrade i did was putting an rv lock keyless lock on the front door so now we just have to we don't have to carry keys with us um, you know when we're out at a campground just with a push of a button we can lock and unlock the front door Above the bed, two more um, storage cabinets and a couple of cubbies on either side and a little bit of shelving on the sides. This one on this side does have outlets and USB, so I could plug my phone in there at night and charge it. This one does have a sliding door here with a full length mirror. And then on this side, another sliding door to block off from the main part, the living area of the motorhome. So here is the control panel. So as I mentioned, 
everything in this motorhome works. So here are the switches for the slides. Here is the solar charge controller, as you can see. Generator's running, so batteries are full, but it's a nice sunny day also. There's the inverter on the left. There is the generator. Our power control center tells us that because the generator is on, we have 46 total amps. Hot water heater, so this has gas and electric hot water. When we're at a campground, we almost always use electric. Why use the gas if we don't have to? And of course, button for the water pump. There is the switch for the electric hot water. So, here's where you can switch between the tanks. So we have our black tanks, the front, which is this one, and the rear bathroom. And then we have our gray tank switch. So this is for the galley, which includes the sink, as well as the gray water from the half bath. And then the bath is all that bathroom, the shower and the sink in there. So, like I said, these do work. Now, it's October 31st, I have winter eyes, so there is some water in the tanks. There's antifreeze in the tanks. I always keep water in the tanks, especially the black tanks, because it helps to reduce smells. I've done, this, done it this way for five years. We've never had a problem, but I just wanted to show you. So this is saying the gray water is on galley. So I go to gray water here, and it's showing that that gray tank is empty. We'll switch to bath. Again, that's the rear bath. So the shower and the rear sink, also empty. So now we'll do black tanks. So why they switch these, I don't know. It took a while for me to get used to it because the rear of the motorhome is that way. The front of the motorhome is that way. But anyway, you just have to remember. So here, the front black tank, which is gonna be this toilet. So we go black tank, and there's a third of a third of a tank of water and antifreeze in there. We go to the rear tank, and it should be the same. Fresh water tank, empty. Batteries going to be charging because the generator is on. And LP, two-thirds full. So like I said, everything in this motorhome works as it should. The jacks work, the slide-outs work, control panels work. Um, tank sensors work. How many tank sensors work in a five-year-old motorhome? they do in this one because we took care of it. The only thing, again, that doesn't work which was totally my fault, was, or is, the ice maker in the freezer. And by the way, it could be fixed. The dealer quoted me $500 because they have to pull that whole thing out. So I guess it's a lot of labor hours. The part itself was less than 200 bucks. Um, I just didn't have the time to do it or I would have done it myself. And like I said, we could make ice no problem. So we really didn't need it. But that's it. This motorhome could be yours. Again, you could buy this and you could go on a trip today. All you have to do is stop and get food. It is ready to go. So what do you say?